Hi guys, welcome to the third part to my pink holiday series. In this video, we are going to be painting the pink sleigh. If you're wondering about the base drawing, please refer to the description below so you know exactly how and when the base drawing will be sent out. It is via my website, so you need to make sure that you are signed up for my e-newsletters and all the drawings for these videos that are coming out from the Pink Holiday series will be sent out on a weekly basis as the video is scheduled to go out. So make sure you're signed up because this is literally the only time you will get the base drawings to do these. There's another option, you can also feel free to go ahead and challenge yourself and do the basic drawing for yourself without the base drawing and then join me in this video so we can get together and have some painting fun. So let's get right into the supplies really quickly. So as I mentioned previously for my supplies these deco brushes by Karen are going to be a feature in this little painting here. I also use them in the car in the pink car which was the second video so you all saw that over there. And then for brushes, I'm using the same brushes as I've been using in the last two videos for the series, which is the Princeton Heritage in the Zero, Princeton Round Number no. 4 Velvet Touch, and Princeton Neptune Number no. 6, also a round. And then for the basic colors, we are using Dalaroni Aquafine watercolors. They come in these cute little... And then finally, for our metallics, we're using KMS Metallics, specifically the Champagne. Absolutely love her line of metallics and Champagne. Um, her Champagne is one of my favorites, which is what we've used right here in there. All right, so before we get to painting and all the fun stuff, I want to remind you guys, if you like videos like this, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as it really does help my channel grow. And I would so appreciate it if you end up doing this, please tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. I would love to see how your beautiful pink sleigh turns out. Don't forget, if you're looking for any of these items that I'm using, and I neglected to mention the paper I'm using, the paper I'm using is at your watercolor pad, which is right here. I've listed everything in the description below, so feel free to check that out. Everything is also on my Amazon store, plus my most used items, and it's the holiday season, so if you're looking to get stuff for yourself or for someone else, um, check it out, check out my list. So the first thing we're gonna do is get some of our Alizarin, Alizarin, crimson and using my number six Princeton I'm going to mix a little bit of a watery version of this pink and like I mentioned because we want to keep those nice pink hues instead of going into the deeper darker reds it needs to be watered down by quite a bit and we're going to start off by painting this large surface right here and it's going to be a nice light color like I mentioned so Whichever brush will give you the good results in terms of getting nice clean edges, I suggest you use that. For me, I have a little bit more control and so I'm able to use my Princeton number no. 6, which I love uh, for situations like this. So in this um, technique that we're using, which is just your basic area filling up your area with color. I like the fact that because we're going light, there is a huge possibility that we'll get, and depending on how we're laying down the strokes, that we'll probably get almost like a dried up texture happening on here. Again, this depends on, are you painting two strokes and then going back and resting a bit before you do the next few strokes, um, that sort of thing, because you guys know that watercolor dries up differently um, even if you kind of go in a minute sorry um, a couple of seconds later to paint so you'll get a different variation in tone so I don't mind that although right now it's not dried up yet mind you it's looking pretty pretty decent um, but if there's that texture it'll give it that nice organic feel I'm just adding a little bit of darker pinks in the corners around here and the edges 
Now is the perfect time, as you've probably heard me mention this several times in the previous videos as well. This is the time where, while it is damp, we're getting that gorgeous bloom just around the edges to kind of give us that semblance of dark, shadowy bits. So I'm just getting just a tad and using just the tip of my brush. We're lightly dabbing this color in and then the water is doing the work for us. Like you can see this area over here, I have almost like a little bit of a hard edge happening. And that's because uh, this area has dried up right around there and you can see that there's a bloom happening right here and there's a hard edge up happening there. Now I can always get water and sort of smudge that out, but I like how that looks. So I'm going to just leave that there. It's very organic. It's very almost like rustic feel in terms of the style of painting. So I'm leaving that in there and just giving a little bit of extra highlights around the edges. Perfect, so this is great. I'm gonna let this dry. And what we're gonna do is tackle, start tackling some of the greenery and stuff. Actually, no, before the greenery, let's tackle the, the present. So for the present, we've got some pinks. We're definitely gonna get some nice gold or metallic happening for the bottom part and also the border. So why don't we make the present more of a nice bright, blue so something like a Prussian blue with like an indigo or maybe something like that which would go quite nicely with it in fact if we mix a little bit of viridian green I think I like more of this sort of greenish blue that we can get in almost like a turquoise I think that would go very nicely with what we have so let's do that so I'm going to use some I will switch between these two brushes just so I can get good detailing happening in there so I'll get a very watered down version of this color so I'll use my number six because I want the inner parts of the present to be light and then we'll go for a nice dark rich um, version of this color for our ribbon which I think would just look fantastic so again if you feel more comfortable doing this portion with your number four for instance or even a number two brush go for it um, use what you know will give you the most comfort and make this more enjoyable for you and also give you good results do not compare um, the fact that I'm using a number six. Maybe you cannot. Maybe you're using a number eight and you're even better than me. Go for it. Just we, we want to make sure that we hone in on what works for us and go with that. Because what works for me doesn't necessarily work for you. And that's totally okay. We all vibe on a different level when it comes to things like comfort and strokes and handwriting and brush strokes even yep I already mentioned strokes so this area here I'm going a little bit darker just to sort of indicate like that's the shadowy area um, another thing you can do is even add in a little bit of sepia if you want to make it a tad bit darker but kind of leaving that same washed out feel to it I'm just going with this instead of having to mix and get the right tone and blah, blah, blah. There we go. Adding a couple of dabs of this brighter color at the bottom. Fabulous. Now we got the top of this left to do. So I'm getting some color. Again, same consistency. Skirting around our bow here yeah for this part I would I'm going to switch out now to my number four and just get a 
finer tip because the number four coming from the coming from the uh, Velvet Touch series is such a gorgeous fine tip and it works beautifully for such things. So I'm also trying to leave a sliver of white space in between the top area of the box and the bottom that we just painted. And this is mainly to sort of still intentionally give it that loose look and feel, but at the same time we're also giving it a little bit of shadowy light and shadow sort of um, differentiation points. Taking some green directly from the Viridian Green and I'm just dabbing it right where the bow sits, like around the area. Fabulous. So I love the fact that we've got some lights, we've got some darks, and now we can wait for this to dry before we do the do the um the ribbon and this is mainly because if we do the ribbon right now and we happen to paint a little bit into the box it's going to flare out in there and that's what we don't want. So while that's happening why don't we just go ahead and do some of the green foliage and such happening. So for that I'm using Viridian and I'm going to be mixing a little bit of sap green as well get some nice variations in color and it's it's kind of like a really bright green so I don't want everything to be super bright and this is where we get a little bit of contrast in our painting so I'm just going to be adding a little bit of sepia these are pretty much the same colors we've been using throughout this pink holiday series here so nothing different nothing new um, outside of the fact of maybe water to color ratios and such Okay, so let's let's start off with painting these leaves right here. So I'm going to try and keep things loose, but also not venturing too far out in terms of uh, what we've sketched out here. So I've started with a dark color and then I kind of washed off some of the color because I want to still get that nice fade into things. So for instance, I'm, I just painted in another leaf with the hopes that this color would seep in there. And then I'm doing like another sort of leaf here because I want that effect of like it transitioning outward into darks and lights. Painting these leaves in here in much the same manner. I want to get that nice feel for those beautiful watercolor bleeds. And now, because we want, like I mentioned, always the areas that meet in a tight spot, if you add a little bit of a darker tone, we're getting a nice dark to light. Just really makes it pop a little bit more. So we've done that. Now I'm going to get a little bit of a darker green. So adding a little bit more sepia to my mixture here. And we're gonna tackle some of these guys over here. So I know there's some of these leaves here as well. So actually, you know what? My mistake, we should have done a little bit of these leaves first. So I'm going to get a very watered down version of that. Paint these in. And then this way, when we do our top layer here, we're getting a nice overlap, but the bottom is a lighter color. Feel free to add a couple of extra leaves if you want to, just to 
make it a little bit more freestyle on your part. Okay, so we'll allow that to dry a little. So let's just switch back over here and um, tackle some of these berries. So for the berries, I'm going to keep it the same color, the alizarin, but this time I'm getting it directly from the color cake. And we're just going to paint these in. You can leave a little bit of white space in between. What, I, what you can also do is do a couple sporadically and then wash off most of the color from your brush. And with a very light, like the light pink that's left over on your brush, just go in and create more berries adjoining in the areas that you've just painted. And what happens is it's drawing color from from the um, the really dark berries and it's blooming and seeping into it which is again adds to your loose look and feel and the white space acts more as a light hitting the berries making it shine yeah I'm adding some like all the way down here And then we'll do the same thing over on this side here. So we'll do the same thing, like I said, going darker. Just doing a couple here and there and then going in with a more a lighter version of this and kind of painting some, touching those guys. just giving you that nice beautiful blend and variation in color pretty just doing one there doing one off to the side here it's nice to kind of have some almost like polka dot style berries happening here and there and it gives you a nice trail let's get into the the ribbon so I'm gonna get some off my sepia and I'm mixing it in with this nice dark Viridian slash Prussian blue color that we have absolutely gorgeous and I'm just getting a darker version of it so more of a um, cream consistency where it's more color less water and this way when we paint we're getting a nice rich rich version of that color Now just make sure this area is dried up, otherwise you'll get a lot of seepage happening. I got a tiny little sliver of like a dot of paint coming out, which I just worsened by doing what I just did, but it's okay. Sometimes we like to tempt fate and do something we shouldn't do and then we get a result we don't want. Yeah, that happens. Okay, so almost done here and then we can... So I'm leaving a little bit of white space in this top area here because the color of the ribbon is going to be almost, not almost, Actually, yes, almost the same. And I say almost because the way to give this ribbon a slightly darker color um, or tone so that it's clearly differenti differentiable, dif differentiated um, between the ribbon on the box versus the actual ribbon, the bow, 
is by giving it a slightly darker tone. So I'm going to get sepia a little bit, mix it some more with my mixture, and then paint first the little area where the ribbon, the tie happens. And then I'm going to lightly add some here and also at the bottom of this fold. Same thing here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some water, wash off most of the color from our brush, and we're going to spread this. So I've washed most of it off. I'm going to get some of that light blue, and I'm going to paint this in. And what this is doing is it's giving us a nice blend. So you need to do, time is of the essence here because you don't want those first lays of color that we just did to dry up. <clears throat> and usually in the bend here, it's supposed to be a lot darker. So don't worry, we'll go in with a darker tone. Make sure you're getting a nice enough blend for those for that bow to look pretty. Hitting some of the edges of the bow here, just so that the lighter area plays off to look more like a, um, like a shine on the bow for lack of a better way of explaining it. And then I'm gonna take a tad bit more of my sepia. And I'm just gonna add that right to that area here. I want there to be enough dark tones happening right when it where it's damp. Um, and then just really make it pop. And you can see it's popping real nice. So now our leaves are dry, let's go in and do some pine leaves. So I like to do mine kind of very similar to the berries where we're doing a couple of strokes with like really dark color. And I'm even gonna add one over here. I didn't draw it in, but I'm going to add one there. And then I'm washing off most of the color from my brush. I'm going to get a little bit of that sap green and water it down. And then I'm going in and lightly adding more strokes in. I'm trying to leave as much white space as I can. And if you're overlapping on the, the leaves we had painted, that's totally fine. Something needs to have a hierarchy, so it's all good. And getting some more of that sap green, let's add a couple of strokes here. And you can overlap on your on your little present as well, that's fine. Okay, so we've got two of those. You can add a third if you wish. I'm gonna leave this for now. I'm just getting some more of that dark sepia. And I'm just adding, or the dark green rather, and I'm just adding a stroke down the center of our little guys here. Now that I have that, um, we can go ahead using that same color and attach our berries. If you wanna get more of a brown color for these, that's also fine. Just use the sepia, that should work well. So there's one connection. I'm gonna turn this around to get a connection here. I'm overlapping on our light leaves with this sprig of um, of berries. Okay, perfect. We've got some great 
darks and lights happening there. And then now we can do the mistletoe leaves. And I think that'll be nice. Actually, before we do the mistletoe leaves, this area, how it's turning out to look is kind of bothering me. So what I'm going to do is get more of that sap green real quick. And do another quick one spilling out. And then just getting some more of that um, sepia and drawing that down in the middle, pulling it down to where it meets here with the rest of the guys. Perfect. Love it. For my mistletoe leaves, we're doing pretty much all of the sap green. And if you can get a nice lighter consistency so it doesn't look almost like a gouache lay. So I got enough color there. So I've just dabbed off most of the color from my brush. And with just water, I am spreading this around in that space. For my one leaf. And then very similar to how we did the the present, we're going to add little drops of darker green in there just to give us a nice dark hue, creating some contrast in our leaves and also a little bit of pop so it doesn't look flat. Always push all the color down to the bottom. Just like that. And I think there's a little something at the back here. I'm just going to leave that actually. But um, I would like to do just another leaf. Maybe just like hovering at the top here. So I'm just lightly painting this in taking my time with it because I don't want to mess up because this is a freehand addition of this element. There we go. Okay, so we've got one there. Now we're going to get some of that dark green that we did and we're just going to sort of lightly create some lines to kind of indicate the veins of the leaf. Or if you want to just lightly highlight just the bottom of it and the edges, that's fine too. Just to give it a little bit of variation in tone. So the next thing I want to tackle is the nice little leafy des design that we have on the inside of our sleigh. And for that, I'm going to use KMS Champagne, which is like one of my favorites. Um, I could also use the bronze because I am going to use the deco marker for the baubles up there and especially the bottom portion here. So maybe you want to tie it in or if you want to have one champagne, one bronze, that's fine too. Um, yeah, I think I'll do the champagne because I'm really liking it. So uh, for this part, I'm using my number 10. Sorry, not 10. Zero. All I was thinking about was zero and then I said 10. So making sure I get the paint nicely. And all we're doing is lightly grazing and then adding, like pretty much kind of painting in our, over our painting really. It's such this, like, take this time to just relax into this moment of just enjoying the concentration that comes with doing and executing this part. Just allow yourself to get swept away in it. I'm going to do the one 
and then I am going to pause the video, do it by myself, maybe even do a time lapse, and uh, I'll get right back to you guys. Okay, so the leaves are done and it looks fabulous. I love the glisten. And so now we can go on and kind of finish up the remaining that we have left. So here's where I am introducing you guys to the metallic permanent marker. Um, for the last video for the car, I did use the metallic markers, but I, it was not part of the video. So here you go. You guys get to watch me in action using this amazing product. Um, so it's got a nice fine pointed tip. So I'm going to use that to just pretty much outline my beautiful little curly sleigh, bottom of the sleigh. I don't know what you call these. Anyone know what the this portion of the sleigh is called? Let me know in the comments. So it's very similar to watercolors in the sense that um, if I wanted to just do a little portion of it and then take a brush and spread that color around, it'll work. So I'm going to do a little portion here. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of trying to keep the outline. So I'm vi like literally grazing my paper to get this nice raggedy, jaggedy outline. And I'm also trying to leave a little bit of white space in between So here you can watch me get some color, some, a brush and just kind of spread the color around. So you can get these effects as well if this is what you're looking for um, from, I guess, from uh, the product, from for your final outcome, however you want to phrase that. But so it kind of helps you get um, that nice two-tone range that I'm constantly talking about in almost every video and every subject that I paint, be it flowers, be it leaves. So you're able to get that and it comes in so many different colors, but I have listed all my favorite colors and the ones that I have, so hence I'm partial to them, in uh, the description below. So feel free to check that out and get yourself some because it's the holiday season. You might want to give gifts. You might want to get some for yourself. They make a great addition to um, your art supply list. So, so this part as well, very much so like the, like the leaves we painted, relax into it, have fun with it, um, really concentrate, don't feel rushed. So I'm going to pause this video, do this by myself, and then I'm going to hop right back on and show you guys my results. So um, I would also recommend using the same thing to do the outline of the sleigh and then let's hop back on. So we're almost done. We just need to paint our little baubles and um, just add a little bit of finishing touches and then we are ready. So for the baubles, I'm going to be using my deco brush in the metallic violet. And instead of painting the whole thing in, all I'm going to do is do stripes on it. So just lightly grazing and extending. This way it gives a little bit of a texture to our composition instead of just filling things in. Feel free to use your watercolor and using your brush to do this if you wish love how that's turned out 
There is a second bobble off to the side. So what I'm going to do is just take my brush and lightly extend this because, you know, these colors are so cool that you can just take your brush and do the little bits that are harder to get to. Okay, so this is done. Let's do that one. And for that one, I'm going to use my pink. I believe, yes, metallic pink. And because the whole theme, everything is pink, 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 um, we can go ahead and make this a solid ball. It's not as bright or light a pink um, as the Alizaran, and so I don't mind painting the whole thing. Just takes a little bit of concentration and a little bit of effort just so that it doesn't seep into the next one and also on the leaf. But that's pretty much it. Um, one more thing, because I'm looking at it, is to add, add a little gray or maybe even a sepia to the string or the ribbon hanging that's going to be hanging our little bobble. And what I also did was I used the gold from the leaves to to add um, some nice detail at the bobble top. And I'm going to use some of this color to just get in some light, dark tones. When I say light, I mean like a couple of strokes. I don't mean light in color. And I'm just going to add some in between our leaves and such as well. Again, adding more shadowy effects so that things stand out a bit more and you really get that whole grasp of there's like a lot happening in between there as well. We're like pretty much done. There's one tiny element over there that I wanna make sure doesn't look random, like the space doesn't look random and left out. So we can take some of our darker green whatever's left over really and just paint that in either you want to paint that in to sort of mimic leaves or you just want to add a couple of dabs to kind of give it some organic shape that's fine essentially just adding color to make it seem fuller and cohesive with the rest of the items here. So I've even added a couple of dabs on the leaf and then washing off my brush I'm just going to go in and spread the color around just across the surface at the top so it doesn't look hard edged. And that's that's really it for this. If you want to do a splatter, you can go ahead and do a splatter. What I have done with my uh, KMS champagne, I kind of added a couple of um, little dots over our dark green just to kind of make it a little more festive looking and also bump up that quality of the, the uh, champagne that we have from the leaves here. So I'll do a little bit of a splatter and I'm going to use my sepia for that. If we had any black in here, I would have used black, but I'm going to use sepia. And I'll just do a little splatter around the leaves. Mainly in where the... the the plant the plants the foliage is is where we want to add a splatter what I'm doing is getting some water on my brush to get a lighter splatter and that is it we are done so hope you guys liked this I'm just gonna lightly dab off some of the 
splatter that I don't want to be as prominent. I don't mind some on the sleigh, but I'm just trying to lightly dab some off. But here we go. We are done. Did you guys enjoy this? Let me know in the comments below. And I would love to see how yours turns out. So please make sure you post it on the Facebook group. Or if you've posted on Instagram, please tag me so I can see it and appreciate your hard work. Last but not least, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Hit the like button. And um, it really, really does help my, my channel grow. And I'm able to continue creating videos like this for you guys. Okay, and one last reminder, if you're looking for any of the supplies I have used here, they are listed in the description below. And if you're looking for the base drawing, please be mindful that this base drawing or the base drawings for the pink series are only sent out via email. So make sure you've signed up on my website to receive the weekly emails that'll have this base drawing. In addition, you can feel free to try and sketch this by yourself. I always like a good challenge and show me your results. Thanks guys for watching and we'll chat soon. Bye.